so it's fun that you can get really fresh vegetables right now. And tomatoes with hot houses and hoop houses, they can grow tomatoes all year round. And even in Nebraska, they can grow tomatoes in the middle of the winter. So it is kind of nice. Um, with tomatoes, it's the same kind of thing with cucumbers. If, if you have a tomato that's kind of bitter, a lot of times it's the seeds. So if you don't want that bitterness, if you have a tomato sauce, or pasta sauce, and if you're using crushed tomatoes, it kind of has a bitterness to it. If you take the seeds out before you cook it, it'll take a lot of that bitterness out. So that's a good, a good hint, too, if, it, if you ever get to that where it just tastes a little bit bitter. Uh, the easiest way to take the seeds out is just to cut the tomato in half and then in half again. And then you can just take a spoon or something to kind of scrape those seeds out of there. But be careful because sometimes they kind of shoot out of there and get all over yourself. Do you have a preference for what type of tomatoes you use? You know, it, to me, it's what I can get that's the freshest. Um, a lot of times in the past, in the out, you know, in the off season, outside of the summer, Roma tomatoes are easy to get, and they're probably the best tasting outside of the growing season. But like I said, with hoop houses, um, it's just what I can get that looks so freshest. And then, you know, typically if they look really fresh, they usually taste pretty good. Um, here in the next couple of weeks to get the nice heirloom tomatoes, tomatoes that are not like these big red tomatoes or the kind of tomatoes that grow in, you know, outside of America or outside of the standard red tomatoes and they have a lot of flavor and a lot of color. And so it's nice, you can use those and it adds a little bit more color and it tastes more like a tomato where some of these are more mild. Is there anyone that's better nutritionally for you or are they all the same? Um, they're all pretty much the same. You know, the, it's the more that you you cook it, or the more that you do to it, you lose more nutritional value. So, you know, the fresher you can have vegetables, the better they are. If you want to take the skin off the tomato, you have a little boiling water. Put a little, little cross or a little X on the tomato. Set in some boiling water for like 10 seconds. And then when you take it out, you can peel that skin right off that tomato. So if you want skinless tomatoes, you can do that also. In a commercial restaurant, if you have a really clean fryer before you fry any french fries or anything in it, you can take a whole case of 30 pounds of tomatoes and throw them in a fryer for like two seconds. And then you can peel the skin off. So it works in big quantities, but if you have a dirty fry that tastes like french fries, your tomatoes will taste like french fries. Oh, Nobody sure. wants that. Oh, well, maybe. So you are maybe. still wrong about that. Maybe you I do want everything that tastes like fresh fries. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Maybe if it was fish, fried fish. I don't know. Maybe you would want fried fish tasting. Maybe. So again, I'm just trying to cut them into smaller pieces. You know, with a salad, you, you know, you could just uh, wedge and leave them in bigger pieces, or get those nice grape tomatoes or cherry tomatoes and just maybe cut them in half or cut them in quarters. Uh, so it just kind of depends on what's available and what you have. Okay, so we've got some fresh tomato, got my fresh cucumber. How many of you have cutting boards at home? Can you a knife, some kind of knife tool? Do you ever use your cutting board and it slides around a lot on you? No, sometimes, sometimes not. If you do, the easiest thing you can do is to take a piece of towel or paper towel, get it wet, and stick that underneath. And then it acts kind of like a non-skid surface. Now it's not going to slide around on you. If you get into like watermelon and cantaloupe here in the, in the summer, you get a lot of that liquid around, you're trying to cut in that cutting board will shoot out underneath you. So something like that, even a paper towel, just get it wet, bring it out, it stays underneath, it'll keep it from sliding. So nice little trick. So all these things we do in, in restaurant kitchens that I think of when I go home, it's like, oh, I should do that at home too. Let me that. Tomato. 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 And then what I've got here are snow peas. I've seen snow peas before. They usually have that little kind of little like little hair almost kind of sticking out of it. And what you want to do with these is you've got to remove that spine. 
it's that little piece. If you don't, it gets it's stringy, and then as you eat that, it, may, it stays in your teeth. Sometimes it sticks in your teeth, or it's harder for you to chew up. So it's just grabbing one corner, and you just peel, and that little string piece will come off of there. So you want to peel those off on snow peas, or you get that that, that stringy piece left. On. I think I did all. Fresh snow peas, just rinse them off really well, make sure that they're clean. There's nothing wrong with some fresh snow peas. Uh, put them in with salads, uh, just make a nice little vegetable salad like this. Nothing wrong with those, so I'm going to set those in there with our tomatoes and our cucumbers. Okay, we're going to Let's see, do we want onion? Do we all like onion? Can't go wrong with onion. Raw onion is sometimes a little strong, so you can cut it a little smaller, or you can uh, it's not using as much of it, and that way it's not quite as potent. So fresh uh, fresh onions, just rinse them off, peel them really well, and then I always rinse them one more time because sometimes as you're peeling them, some of that dirt will get into the onion there, but peel them off real good. Uh, I can show you a couple ways to cut up an onion. I typically just trim the top so I have a nice flat surface, and then I'll take, and I if I have like a spot like this, I can trim that off so I have a little bit, just a little bit there that's kind of brown. I don't want to peel a whole bunch off, the rest of it is fine that little bit. So what you want to do is you can cut almost like onion rings so that you have those and then cut them in half again if you like long kind of strings of onion in your salads and things like that so you got those long pieces. If you want them smaller than that, especially for something like this uh, or maybe as you're cooking and you're trying to get them into the food for the flavor but you want to hide them from you know, your family because uh, sometimes big chunks of onions, kids don't like that kind of thing. You can dice onions. Dicing onions aren't terribly difficult. You just cut your onion in half so it's flat. And then what you do is you just cut straight across, up and down, straight across. And try to as, as close as as close in between as you want. So if you go really close, it'll be really small. If you go a little wider, it'll be a little bit bigger chunks. And so you come across in one direction, and then you just come back across and you just cut it again. And see, it'll, what'll happen is it'll all fall apart because layers and layers of those onions is going to break up into smaller and smaller pieces. So this is a quick way to do it. Instead of trying to take something that's round and try to cut it while it's turning around on your cutting board, cut it in half so it's flat and it's not going to roll around. It's less uh, less dangerous and hopefully it's a little safer. That's probably more than a little bit. That's a lot. Of Got some corn, sweet corn, fresh sweet corn. Very easy, right? Just peel off the husk. We live in Nebraska, so we see a lot of corn, right? Quite a bit of sweet corn out there, right? Now. And corn isn't really healthy for you, right? Um, it is. It, it, you really got to consider it a starch. Um, okay. So you know, in my in, a lot of times, what you'll do is. If you're going to have a corn dish, you would want to serve it with other vegetables because by itself, it's really just like a, like a starch, like a potato starch. So you would need vegetables and peppers and other other vegetables to offset it. But by itself, really don't want to call this just a vegetable by itself. And you need more nutrients. Um, but it is good and it does have nutrients and vitamins. So it's still it's still something you know that is not really bad for you. A lot of uh, uh, restaurants and new trends, and on TV you see things like uh, grits. A lot of grits. Um, at the, there's a restaurant in Lincoln that I do desserts for, and they do. It's a steakhouse, and they do uh, more corn grits than mashed potatoes. It seems like it's just cheddar, cheddar cheese, corn grits, a little salt, and pepper, and they sell. Um, So sweet corn, it's not terribly hard to get the corn off the cob. You know, a lot of times you would think, oh, what do I do? You can boil it and then just eat it. But if you want to separate the corn right off, it's just taking your knife and then just running your knife along and then the corn's going to pop right off. Um, yeah. Careful. I got a little bit of overzealous there. So you get all those corn kernels. Then you just got to come up kind of break them up a little bit. So you can do sweet corn and you can you know, leave it on the cob and serve it on the cob or you can break it up and 
cut it right off of the cobble like that. Very sweet this time of year, so it should be a nice added color. You now with this kind of a salad, if you have bell peppers, um, you're going to add between green bell peppers, red bell peppers, yellow bell peppers, a lot of color. It'll be good. Then we'd want to maybe just saute this a little bit or boil it a little bit just to kind of soften it. But I won't do that right now because I don't have to. I don't want to eat water. So I've got salad here. So just a vegetable salad. You can use this in place of a green salad with spinach or uh, lettuce salad or anything like that. And if you have your favorite dressing, you can do that, or you can just do a little bit of oil, a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of vinegar. You don't need a lot of vinegar, unless you like vinegar. But you don't need a whole And a little salt and pepper, you know? They always talk about salt, you know, cut back on salt, cut back, back on salt, and that's fine. But when you're cooking fresh, you need a little bit of salt. And a little bit is all you really need because that little bit of salt is going to enhance the natural flavor. If you don't add salt, it doesn't pop. You, you don't taste it like it should taste. And so it doesn't give it enough flavor. So you always want just a little bit of salt. When we cook from scratch and we cook fresh vegetables, we're in control of the salt. Whereas if we're buying things that are already canned or things that are already processed, we're what's in the salt, what's in there that they added there, how much salt is already in there. So with this, we have that little bit of leeway where we can add as much Want a little. You can kind of see just very simple but a lot of color. You know, there's going to be a lot of flavor with all the zucchini, or not the zucchini, the cucumber, and the peas, and you've got the tomatoes, and a little bit of onion in there. So just a little bit of like a cold salad. Is there any vegetables or anything that you've come across that you're not sure what to do with it or that you've seen? For me, lentils and fennel and kale. I think those are the best ones, like I've heard kale chips. Yeah. But nothing as far as lentils or um, or like chard, Swiss chard, um, like those random ones. Okay. I'm not sure how to do it. I hear they're really healthy. They are, they are. You know, kale, kale and Swiss chard, you, you can kind of treat very kind of similarly. Um, with Swiss chard, you can you could braise it, you know, just cook it or cook it in a saute pan with a little salt, pepper, and oil until it kind of breaks down and softens a little bit, and then you can just serve it like that. Um, you could, you know, kale, really popular right now, mm -hmm. is adding it to salads or cooking it in soups or adding it to sounds weird smoothies. Um, yeah, kale in a smoothie, yeah, because you're gonna get a lot of the antioxidants and a lot of flavor, and then you can kind of hide that flavor of kale with, you know, bananas and strawberries and blueberries, you know, different things to kind of offset that, but very, you know, very healthy uh, and very good for you. So, um, lentils, lentils are, are basically a side dish. I mean, you would want to cook that and serve it as your side and then just, you know, have it with vegetables or have it with, um, you know, peas or with something. So just cook your lentils down till they're soft and then you just add like fresh vegetables to it, and you can just serve that as a side with whatever you're serving. Um, and they're very versatile. I mean, you can use them in soups, you can use them in all kinds of things, so they're pretty versatile. So we usually put the lentils, the potatoes, and onions, make it kind of like a soup. Okay. Yeah, and it's good in soups because it helps to kind of thicken up those soups too. And they're like long, right, with like white bulbs and green. That's what lentils are, right? No, lentils are beans. Yeah, they're like little beans. So you're talking about. So they're long. So how are you thinking of leeks? Um, well, they're, they're like long, and then they just have like a white, kind of like a white bulb, and then it turns dark. Maybe like a green onion or does a chive. Like a, does it look like a giant green onion? But it's, uh, yeah, but the, the onion part is small. Small. Okay. Yeah. That's a leek. 
A leak. There you go. Yes. Yeah. It's it's just, you leak. treat it like an onion. <laughs> you treat it like an onion. Um, when you use the leak, you typically don't want to use the, the top, the really dark, leafy part. Yeah. You want to get down till it gets into the stem part. And you can go all the way down to the white and use the whole thing. But what you got to do is, when lentils, uh, almost said lentils. Okay. Uh, when leeks grow, they grow up and then they grow out around it. The next layer goes around it. The next layer goes around it, and they grow in kind of dirt and sand. And so you've got to, after you get a leaf, cut the really dark top off, cut the very bottom off, cut it in half, and then uh, separate it and rinse it, or cut it up and then rinse it, because you're going to get layers of sand trapped in between each of those layers uh, that grow around it. I think it's kind of gritty. It's an onion. Treat it like an onion, but it's way more mild than an onion. So it's a good alternative if you, you know, if you've got picky people who don't like onion, using leeks, it's a little more mild onion taste. Great soups out there that you can make with leeks. There's a couple of recipes in the book too for leeks that might give you some ideas. Oh, that's good. It's good. What other one did you say? I think you covered it. <laughs> so right now, you see lots of zucchini and lots of summer squash. Lots of it out there. Um, and it's versatile, it's very versatile. You can eat these raw and put them in salads. You can just rinse them really well, make sure you get all the dirt off of them, and you can eat them with the skin on and everything. Um, as a side dish at dinner, serving it as a hot vegetable, it's very quick, very easy. Um, and they take a lot of flavor in from whatever you put with it. So what I have is I just have some um, dry thyme, a little dried oregano. I've got some garlic. I've got my zucchini and my summer squash, a little salt, a little pepper, and I think maybe a little garlic. And we'll just saute it lightly. And if you have olive oil, or if you have, I just have canola oil, because it's very mild. Uh, it's not gonna have a ton of you know, flavor, like olive oil would have more flavor. Um, and then with allergies, some people are allergic to corn, so I didn't want to drink corn or peanut oil. Some people are allergic to peanuts. It's something neutral, like a canola oil, uh, just to saute it. In. If, you're, if you're a butter person, nothing wrong with butter. It in butter too, uh, but it's a little bit more, you know, calories and a little more saturated fat in butter, of course. So you have to, you know, that's up to you. Uh, so with the zucchini, I'm just going to trim the bottom and the top off, and then I'm just going to cut into just. I like the shape that it's in, so I just like to keep it that round shape. You can cut it in half and cut it so you have half moon shape. Um, so you can just, you know, be creative as you want, but I like this nice round, it's a nice consistent shape. Just try to cut them the same thickness if you can, because if you have one that's thicker and the other one that's thinner, the thinner ones will be overcooked by the time the thick ones are cooked. So if you try to be a little more consistent when you cut them, they'll cook more evenly. So the thickness is the big thing. how thick you cut them. Let's see if I can cut them. Uh, if you have, you know, gosh, anything you want to put with something like a vegetable medley like this. Um, mushrooms, I don't know, it's hard to get a lot of kids to eat mushrooms. Even college kids at the culinary school, just trying to get them to have mushrooms. Just don't be afraid, it's a mushroom. It's perfectly good. Some summer squash, same thing. Now you see a lot of restaurants that are using both of these vegetables because this is what's in season right now. You know, we had Brussels sprouts for quite a while um, in the spring, and then we have, right now we have our summer squash, um, and we'll start getting like, more green beans and things like that. So you'll, you'll see a lot more of these available out of the market too as you're eating out there. saute, you don't need a ton of oil, you know, just a little bit of oil so that it'll help to cook as you're, you're running through. And you can always add more oil, it's much better that start with a little and then add more if you need it. So if you have too much in there then it sucks up into the into the vegetable and then it's not as healthy if you got all of that. Start with a nice hot pan, if it's not hot enough, just turn it up a little bit as you get cooking. Again, a little salt, a little pepper. A little bit. Stick a 
little bit of onion in there. Just put that. If you don't like the flipping thing when you saute, just take a spatula of some kind and you can just keep moving it around every once in a while. You don't want to put the garlic in right away because garlic will burn really quickly. So you kind of want to wait a little ways to add that in. Uh, if you're using fresh herbs, you know, at the markets, a lot of times they'll have fresh basil, they have fresh oregano. Uh, you want to add that kind of towards the end also because it'll cook, it wilts, it doesn't look as pretty. So if you add it towards the end, uh, you'll still get a lot of flavor and it's not going to affect um, the look of it. Add a little bit of water. using dried herbs, you want to add them a little bit more towards the beginning, the middle of the cooking time because they need to rehydrate, soak up some of that moisture from the vegetables and then you get more of the flavor out of it. Dried herbs, you use less dried herbs than fresh because the fresh herbs, you need maybe a tablespoon to break only a teaspoon of dried because they're more concentrated once they're dry. So don't, don't go too heavy on those fresh or dried herbs and keep overpowering. A little thyme, a little oregano. If you have, you know, like a spice mix or an Italian spice mix or you know, one of your favorite mixes of spices or herbs, you can sure use that, something like this. Garlic, it's probably just one little clove, it's probably good. Garlic is pretty easy to deal with, it's going to give it a little squish. And then just take your knife and just kind of cut it up into smaller pieces. If you're trying to get the flavor of garlic but you don't want big chunks to chew in, then you really want to just keep cutting it and cutting it up. It's called mincing. So it's really, really small pieces. If you like the big kind of burst of flavor of garlic, then you can just slice it really thinly or kind of leave it in bigger chunks. So that way when you bite into it, when you're eating something like this, it'll really burst and kind of pop it. Tenderness. You don't want them mushy, of course, but you want them. Think of, I don't know if you've had pasta before, they say al dente. Al dente pasta means that you bite into it and it's not crunchy, but it's not really soft. It's the same kind of thing you're looking for with vegetables, is you want them to be al dente. You want them to be just tender, but still a little crisp. So let's see how it is. If you're cooking at home, just try it. You don't have to poke it with a fork. You can pick one up and taste it. A little bit more water. The water is also good for, for something like these vegetables. It creates steam. And the steam can help speed up the cooking process. A little bit of for you. I can smell the garlic a little bit more now. A little bit of that onion. Any vegetables you're looking forward to this time of year now, or the summertime, or fruits? I love tomatoes. Tomatoes. 
just take tomatoes, just dice them up a little bit with some fresh basil, olive oil, put on some toasted bread. Uh, there could be a little, a little bit of a bite to them, but you can. That way, I'll try a little bit of food here. Thing is, just don't be afraid to try. It. You know, fennel was another one that you had said something about it. How many of you like black licorice? Taste of black oh, licorice. Yeah. Oh, what your basil tastes like? Yeah, fennel. Oh. Well, that's fennel. And with fennel, you can eat the whole of fennel. Oh, wow. The little bits at the end, the fronds, the little kind of uh, leafy part. Throw that in a salad. You get that little black licorice taste. You take the bulb of the fennel and you can boil it until it's nice and soft, and then shred it like coleslaw. Add it into all kinds of things. Raise it. Yeah, if you don't like it, you might want to stay away from fennel. <laughs> it's still good. You should try it. You should try it. People that ever have like artichokes at farmers markets. Artichokes are kind of hard to grow in our area. Oh yeah. Um, the, yeah, it's the, the temperature zone for artichokes is I don't know anybody that I've ever come across in the area that's done those kind of artichokes at least. So they would be a little harder. You can get fresh ones sometimes at the grocery stores, mm -hmm. um, but I've not seen them. What's the best way to cook kohlrabi? Kohlrabi? Oh, I've always seen it boiled. Yeah, I've always seen it boiled. I, I suppose there's probably, you probably could braise it. Um, just a little oil, um, a little bit maybe chicken stock or something, broth or something, and then just cover it with some foil and then stick it in the oven and let it braise and break down. But, That's the best you do. Yeah. Is that a root? Yeah, it's, it's more of a root. It's, it's, it's one of those, yeah, it kind of throws people off when you get something <laughs> like It's good raw, I just yeah, shredded it up maybe a little bit. Yeah, like cabbage. Yeah, like cabbage. If you guys want to come up, I've got some forks here. If you want to come up and try, um, the beef will be a little cooler now, but you'll be able to get the flavor of the beef. Uh, just like I said, a little salt and pepper, just boiled, a little salt and pepper, very earthy. And then you got the snow peas with the cucumber and the onion. What's that? Oh yeah. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people have started doing like uh, zucchini bread. Yeah, and doing like uh, doing a little bread, sweeter bread. Uh, what about um, ra uh, radishes or beets? Are radishes the same thing as beets? No, no, beet the beets are. Are these are what these are? Beets. Beets. Radishes are kind of spicy. The little spicy. red ones. Little red ones. They're kind of spicy. So what's really nice is if you just clam really well and slice them kind of thin. Yeah. You can just toss them over the cell. They have this pretty kind of bite. Oh, okay. So it's kind of nice with that. Um, mm -hmm. Salads. A lot of times you see them in salads. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there a difference between a large zucchini flavor and a small zucchini flavor? Some. Um, sometimes I think when you get. So you'd have to probably ask somebody who, who eats a lot more of the larger ones. In our industry, we typically don't see a much larger, um, you know, that's, I cut it up already, you know, this, the size that this one was, typically is what we see. When they get a little larger than that, sometimes they get a little, it seems like they're a little more bitter. Um, but I don't think they're like a stronger taste, just a little bit more of a bitterness. We think, okay, not too bad. That burned the, that burned the garlic, it got a little hot, I think. Easy. I mean, and the big thing is, it's just making it easy and small amount of cooking time. But the least, like I said at the beginning, the least that you do to it, the more nutritious it will be. The more you cook it, the longer it cooks, the longer it sets, the less nutrition you get out of it. And it's more flavorful the fresher it is too. And there's all kinds of fun, you know, salsas you can do. You've got fresh corn right now. Get some peppers. Get some onions. Um, cilantro. You can make some really great salsas right now. So lots of fun stuff kid-friendly stuff, pizzas. Just imagine taking that zucchini and that, you know, the garlic and all those things, and then just put them on a pre-made pizza crust with maybe a little tomato sauce, stick them in the oven, bake it off on little buns, yeah. So all kinds of things that you can do to get the kids, you know, with the color and the flavor, 
just introducing it out there, getting it out there, kind of you. My favorite was the beat, I think. The beat? Did you like the beat? Yeah, I never had one before. I would probably need a little more salt. A little more salt, too? I didn't go too heavy on the salt. No, it's spinach. Jamie suggested some spinach. Oh, I have lots of spinach. <laughs> I mean, it, as, just, as just salad, you can do tons of stuff with it in salad, but that's kind of boring. Um, let's see. Cook it in a saute pan with a little bit of water until it wilts. And then take a chicken breast, cut a little pocket in the side of it, put some feta cheese with the spinach, stuff it inside the chicken breast, and then just bake your chicken breast. And then you have spinach, feta stuffed chicken breast. That's easy. 